Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. In this video I'll be covering the youngest and most famous Machairodontine lineage, the Smilodontini. Represented by five genera, including the iconic Smilodon, this lineage originated approximately 10.3 million years ago in Eurasia, before spreading into Africa and the Americas. Often thought of as being stocky and highly muscular animals, the earliest members of the group were relatively slender, leopard-like ambush predators that were far from being the apex carnivores in their environments. All genera within Smilodontini possessed enlarged, blade-like upper canines that were utilised in puncturing the vital organs of their prey, particularly targeting the windpipe and carotid artery for a quick and efficient kill. Compared to modern pantherine cats, Smilodontins had rather weak bites, as their killing method did not rely on clamping their jaws around the throats of their prey for extended periods. Instead, these cats utilised powerful neck muscles and a wide gape to drive their sabre teeth into prey, a clearly effective but risky process. These traits enabled Smilodontins to persist right up until the Pleistocene-Holocene boundary in the Americas, before succumbing to the megafaunal extinction event that also claimed the mammoths, mastodons and giant ground sloths. The oldest and most basal known member of the group was the genus Promeganterion, from the mid to late Miocene of Europe. Known from fossil finds in Eppelsheim, Germany, and the famous Cerro de los Batalones site just outside Madrid, Promeganterion was a leopard-sized predator that stood about 58 centimetres or 23 inches tall at the shoulder. With a slender build and supple body, this cat would have been a capable climber and able to prey on relatively large ungulates. Inhabiting a warm and open wooded habitat, Promeganterion hunted a variety of ungulates including the pig Microstonyx, the horse Hipparion, and the calves of the hornless rhino Acerotherium. Young Gomphotheres and Shivathere giraffes were possibly taken as well. Although a successful hunter, this cat would have had to be wary of the many additional predators that dwelt alongside it particularly the bear in Darktos and the lion-sized Machairodontine Macarodus. The specimens of Promeganterion at Batalones indicate that high percentages of canine breaks were present in this species. This indicates that they hunted in a similar manner to modern cats, a method of hunting that was much riskier due to the lack of protruding incisors. Like modern leopards, Promeganterion was likely solitary, carrying prey into trees in order to feed in peace. A very similar and closely related genus was present in both Europe and Asia between 15 and 9 million years ago, Paramacarodus. Another leopard-sized form, this animal is represented by three species that were native to Spain, Bulgaria and China. By the early Pliocene circa 5 million years ago, Smilodontins entered North America via the Bering Land Bridge. An endemic genus present there was the cougar-sized genus Rhizosmilodon an animal only known from rather partial remains from Polk County, Florida. Represented by several fragmentary lower jaw fossils, not much can be said about this animal other than it was a probable ambush hunter that targeted tapirs, deer and horses in a humid, forested environment. Although Rhizosmilodon was seemingly rare, it was close to the common ancestor of two incredibly successful and widespread genera, with these being Meganterion and Smilodon. Both were larger and more robust than their basal forebears, with shorter tails and proportionally larger sabre teeth. Meganterion was the older of the two, originating in the late Miocene roughly 7 million years ago. It was once thought that this animal evolved in North America, although this has been questioned by more recent finds stemming from Chad and Kenya, suggesting an African origin instead. From there, Meganterion spread into Eurasia and North America during the Pliocene. A powerful, robust form, this cat was comparable to a large jaguar or small male lion in terms of size, standing at least 28 inches tall at the shoulder. Up to seven species are known, and range between 90 and 160 kilograms in weight, or 200 to 350 pounds. Meganterion appears to have preferred open woodland and savanna ecosystems, with remains from the more heavily forested regions of Asia being noticeably rare. Despite its comparatively large size, this cat was still a capable climber, as suggested by the structure of the forelimbs. In addition, the small carnassial teeth indicate that Meganterion would have eaten at a relatively slow and leisurely pace, 
concealed either deep in the underbrush or up a tree. This contrasts sharply with the related and firmly terrestrial social Smilodon, suggesting that Megantherion was a solitary animal, much like modern jaguars or leopards. A wide array of prey was on this cat's menu, including larger artiodactyls, horses, and juvenile rhinos and proboscideans. At Dimanisi, Georgia, evidence also exists in the form of a Homo erectus skull that Megantherion targeted hominids as well. This skull, labelled as D2280, shows wounds to the occipital that match the dimensions of the sabre teeth of Megantherion. From the placement of the bite marks, it can be implied that the hominid was attacked from the front and top of the skull, and that the bite was likely placed by a cat that saw the hominid as a rival. The hominid likely managed to escape the cat, as no evidence points to predation or scavenging, but the resulting wounds proved fatal. Further evidence exists in the form of carbon isotope ratios in the teeth for Megantherion being a hunter of hominids at the Swartkran site in South Africa. When compared with its fellow Machairodont, Dinophilus, which shared the same environment, it was discovered that Megantherion was more likely to prey on hominids than Dinophilus, which preferred to hunt grazing animals based on the carbon isotope ratios of its own teeth. Meanwhile, North American populations of this animal gradually evolved into the genus Smilodon by the early Pleistocene, while the cats persisted in Africa and Eurasia into the middle Pleistocene. The youngest known fossil material dates to approximately 500,000 years ago in China and Southern Africa, where the genus lived alongside and possibly hunted and was hunted by Homo erectus. While Megantherion was slowly dying out in Afro-Eurasia, Smilodon continued to thrive in North America. One of the most iconic members of the extinct Ice Age megafauna, known to the public at large as the saber-toothed tiger, Smilodon was among the top predators of the Pleistocene Americas. A highly robust and terrestrial predator, this genus possessed heavily muscled forelimbs, a short tail, and greatly enlarged saber teeth. Three species are known, ranging between 2.5 million and 10,000 years ago, with the oldest and most basal being Smilodon gracilis. Likely evolving directly from North American populations of Megantherion, S. gracilis was the smallest species, estimated at 55 to 100 kilograms, or 120 to 220 pounds in weight. It was similar to its predecessor Megantherion in terms of size, but its dentition and skull were more advanced. The forelimbs were noticeably stronger than those of modern pantherine cats, and were utilised in grappling with struggling prey. The jaws are capable of opening at degrees significantly wider than those of any living cat, enabling the massive canines to slice through the exposed throat region of its prey. First appearing 2.5 million years ago, S. gracilis was somewhat overshadowed by larger Machairodontines, such as Xenosmilus, becoming extinct roughly 500,000 years ago, but not before evolving into the more massive Smilodon fatalis and Populator. Fatalis replaced gracilis in North America, living as far north as Alberta, first appearing about 1.6 million years ago and spreading into northwestern South America. It ranged from 160 to 200 kilograms, or 350 to 620 pounds, and reached a shoulder height of a meter, or 39 inches. It was similar in size to a lion, but was more robust and muscular, and therefore had a larger body mass. Its skull was also similar to that of Megantherion, though it was more massive and with larger canines. S. fatalis seems to prefer forested or open woodland environments, as suggested by detailed isotope analysis, which point to a preference for forest bison, deer, and tapirs, in contrast to dire wolves, which preferred the open plains. Therefore, it is likely that this animal possessed a spotted coat in order to aid in ambush hunting. Despite being more powerfully built than other large cats, Smilodon had a weaker bite. Modern big cats have more pronounced zygomatic arches, while these were smaller in Smilodon, which restricted the thickness and therefore power of the temporalis muscles, and thus reduced Smilodon's bite force. Analysis of its narrow jaws indicates that it could produce a bite only a third as strong as that of a lion. A 2018 study compared the killing behaviour of Smilodon fatalis and Homotherium serum, and found that the former had a strong skull with little trabecular bone for a stabbing canine shear bite, whereas the latter used a clamp and hold style more similar to lions. The two would therefore have held distinct ecological niches. 
Many Smilodon specimens have been excavated from asphalt seeps that acted as natural carnivore traps. The best known of such traps are at La Brea in Los Angeles, which have produced over 166,000 Smilodon fatalis specimens that form the largest collection in the world. The sediments of the pits there were accumulated 40,000 to 10,000 years ago during the late Pleistocene. Though the trapped animals were buried quickly, predators often managed to remove limb bones from them, but were themselves often trapped and then scavenged by other predators. Smilodon may have been a social animal, as suggested by the remains of an adult individual that suffered with severe hip dysplasia from an early age. The fact that this cat survived at all is testament to the care it received by other members of its group. Just how social Smilodon may have been is very difficult to determine, with behavioural patterns probably varying by sex and species. Like modern lions, these animals may have lived in prides, working together to wrestle prey to the ground before one member of the group could deliver the killing bite. Social living also provided a degree of safety in an environment with a diverse range of competing carnivores, including dire wolves, short-faced bears and American lions. In addition, S. fatalis demonstrated prolonged parental care, as was shown by the discovery of two juvenile cubs found alongside an adult in Pleistocene deposits in Ecuador. The structure of the hyoid bone suggests that Smilodon was capable of roaring like a lion, which has interesting implications for its social behaviour. Meanwhile, Smilodon gracilis entered South America during the early to middle Pleistocene, where it probably gave rise to S. populator, which lived in the eastern part of the continent. This species was enormous, being among the largest felids to ever exist. It stood up to 1.2 metres or 47 inches tall at the shoulder, and weighed between 220 and 436 kilograms, or 490 to 961 pounds. Compared to S. fatalis, Populato was more robust and had a more elongated and narrow skull, with a straighter upper profile, higher position nasal bones, and slightly longer forelimbs relative to the hind limbs. The larger size of Populato was achieved due to the relative lack of competition in comparison to in North America. Isotope analysis has revealed that S. Populato preyed on a variety of large herbivorous animals, including the notoungulate Toxodon, the horse Amerhippus, and the camelid Paleolama. Like modern lions, S. Populato hunted in both forested and open environments, perhaps also living in social groups. Along with most of the Pleistocene megafauna, Smilodon became extinct roughly 10,000 years ago in the Quaternary Extinction Event. Its extinction has been linked to the decline and extinction of large herbivores, which were replaced by smaller and more agile ones such as deer. Therefore, Smilodon could have been too specialised at hunting large prey and may have been unable to adapt. A 2012 study disproved this, with Smilodon toothware having no evidence that they were limited by food resources. Other explanations include climate change and competition with humans, or a combination of several factors, all of which apply to the general Pleistocene extinction event, rather than specifically to the saber-toothed cats themselves. The latest Smilodon fatalis specimen recovered from the Rancho La Brea tar pits has been dated to approximately 13,025 years ago. The latest Smilodon populatal remains were found in the cave of Cueva del Medio near the town of Soria in southernmost Chile, and have been dated to between 10,935 to 11,209 years ago. There was probably no single cause for the extinction of Fatalis or Populator, being a combination of multiple factors that will continue to be debated by paleontologists long into the future. Sadly, the Machairodontians are no more, and remain fascinating relics of an ancient world, both incredibly different, yet temporally very close to our own time. Thanks for watching everyone. The next episode will be a bit of a departure from my usual content in that I'll be covering the early history of Mesozoic paleoart, including contributions from the ancient world and early 19th century Europe. See you again soon. Cheerio.